Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show. Uh, it's Wednesday, the 11th of October. Just me, myself, and I today as uh, the K Man is off uh, back to his native land uh, in Belgium. So we shall get right into it. Um, gonna just kick off with uh, a little bit of data out of Japan overnight, uh, if I can find it. Um, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, oh, I can't find it. Here it is machine tool orders year on year down 11.2 percent. So, another negative number there coming in year on year. So, a bit of uh, softness still in the manufacturing sector there. Um, the tank and survey coming in unchanged at four, nothing to write home about there either. Um, over in your zone. Uh, German uh, CPI for September final numbers confirmed uh, everything we saw in the flash. 4.3 in the HICP, 4.5 in the core number as well. Um, while we're at uh, the ECB, uh, they released a survey, a uh, consumer sentiment survey. Um, the CPI for the next 12 months expectations edged up to 3.8. 5% from 3.4%. Uh, Three-year inflation expectations up a pip as well to 2.5% versus 2.4%. That's the second month running. Those have gone higher. Um, on the income front, uh, there was a touch of an improvement as well. Incomes over the next 12 months, uh, those that see it higher coming in at 1.2% versus 1.1% previously on the spending front though it uh, turned a little bit soft expectations for spending over the next 12 months 6.4 percent versus 6.7 percent previously um, so the ecb seeing a bit of stickiness that will certainly uh or that will likely get some comments out from ecb bods uh, just uh, repeating the rhetoric that the job's not done yet um, and that inflation still remains far from victory um, that's borne out uh, by some of the speakers, uh, ECB's Holtzman, one of the uh, big hawks, says more rate hikes are still possible if new shocks emerge. Uh, ECB's not. Uh, another hawk says restrictive policies will be needed for some time, but policy is in a good place now. Um, we stand ready to adjust rates further if disinflation is stalled. Um, the ECB apparently is looking closely at banks and their commercial real estate loans. Uh, they want to uh, hear some details of structures and what's going on there. So they've uh, potentially flagged a possible stress point um, in bank lending in the real estate sector. Um, doesn't mean there's anything impending right now, but uh, one could level the claim there's no smoke without fire. So uh, they are definitely seeing something happening there. Um, over to the Fed, and well, there's been another floodgates uh, going on with this thing in uh, Marrakesh. Uh, Bostic, uh, sticking to his uh, usual script, doesn't see the need for more rate hikes. Uh, Fed's daily, uh, she was the hawk turned a bit dovish, still sitting in the uh, bit in the neutral camp ish, saying, uh, We have more work to do, inflation is still high. But if bond yields are tight, it could be the equivalent to another rate hike. Uh, maybe the Fed doesn't need to do as much if the market has tightened. Um, another hawk, Kashkari, says inflation is headed down. Um, and the reason for a rise in the 10-year yield is a bit perplexing. Uh, one story is the higher growth expectations. Maybe a bit of a fairy tale, that story. But... Uh, that's what he's thinking anyway. Um, the yield surge may also reflect rising US debt issuance. Uh, and that's more likely to be the case. Um, we may have to raise rates further if the economy is more resilient. Uh, it's possible that higher bond yields could leave less for the Fed to do. Um, so now you're, you're seeing a bit of a theme coming out from uh, these guys and girls that uh, the level of yields is potentially doing the job of tightening for the Fed. Um, which, if that continues, will keep that uh, potential last hike sitting in the back pocket. Um, on the yield front, um, we had a uh, three-year auction overnight. Uh, softer demand, really. Uh, the bid to cover was 2.56 uh, versus 2.75 prior. 
um, that's uh, a little bit soft. Um, the uh, sort of six month or six auction average is 2.79 times on the bid to cover. So all numbers are coming in a little bit softer. Um, one swallow does not make a summer. So we have further auctions coming as well, but uh, maybe some worries just creeping in about uh, the demand side for these auctions coming up, especially with the US um, issuing more and more to cover some of those uh, black holes in their financing. Um, so we need to keep a further eye on those. Um, over in uh, geopolitics and uh, a lot going on in uh, gas at the moment. Um, we had that uh, story yesterday about Finland uh, probing their gas leak um, and they are largely thinking it's an act of sabotage um, from which NATO's Stoltenberg came out saying that uh, he sees a serious response if the Baltic pipe leak was an attack. Um, Israel has stopped gas supplies and that's affected um, uh, exports out of uh, Egypt or potentially going to cause a problem for exports out of Egypt, um, according to the IEA. Um, that's got Italy in a bit of a hop because uh, they take a, a lot of gas from that area um, and they are trying to diversify away from Russian gas. And this was one of their outlets or inlets, whichever way you want to call it. Um, so that might put pressure on uh, Italy, gas supplies and whatnot. And, uh, you know, Tim Foyle hat on, all this gas stuff is happening as we're edging towards winter. Um, I'll leave you to uh, get on with the conspiracy theories on that, but uh, rather than air my thoughts publicly, we can see uh, what that means to geopolitics and uh, the winter to come. Anyway, moving on. Um, I noted yesterday that Amazon were going to be raising wages in the UK for its workers. Uh, that's gone down like a lead balloon, apparently, because workers at a site in the north of England uh, are going to be striking for four days next month, which will include the Black Friday period, uh, according to the union representing those workers. Um, so folks are still not happy with pay and conditions there. Um, right, that's uh, about it I've got from the headlines. Uh, the only other thing was uh, RBA's Kent was out, uh, but he just repeated pretty much the last RBA statement that some further tightening of policy may be required. So it's been, uh, been a bit quiet on the uh, headline front. We have had all these these central bank wafflers, but no one's really given us anything uh, new or to get our teeth stuck into. So we're seeing some pretty tepid price action at the moment. Um, what we need to look forward to, hopefully look forward to, um, is the PPI data to come. Um, it, surprisingly, it's coming before the CPI number. Usually uh, it happens after, but uh, this might be a little bit uh, of an appetizer for that CPI data. Uh, certainly with the market not doing an awful lot right now uh, on anything, um, this data has the potential to spark some life into the, into things if we get some big variations. Um, so headline PPE, uh, PPI uh, year on year expected to come in unchanged uh, on the last month 1.6%. Um, the all important core number is expected to gain a pip to 2.3%. Um, then you have all the other different metrics. So for this one, I think, uh, again, it's going to be size of variation, if at all we see that. So, you know, in normal times when things are, you know, running along calmly, something, uh, you know, two pips either side is usually your metric. But uh, as we're in some far volatile times, um, we're probably going to look, uh, probably look somewhere three to four to five pip difference to uh, bring a big market reaction. So if the core PPI uh, comes in hotter, say 2.6, 2.7%, um, then you're going to see the dollar move on that. Same with the PPI there. Um, so what uh, are we going to expect from these numbers? Well, as I said, it's, it's going to be a lead into the CPI tomorrow. Um, CPI is expected to fall back a pip um, on the headline number. And uh, also on the core number, uh, I'll just check my numbers again. 
give me a second. Uh, the core is expecting to fall two pips to 4.1%. So hot PPI here is going to raise expectations for maybe more stickiness in the CPI numbers. Um, you can't always use it as a direct comparison because uh, PPI uh, can lag CPI uh, by a bit. Um, so, but keep an eye. If we get hot numbers in both uh, PPI numbers, then the market's going to raise expectations for CPI tomorrow, naturally. Um, that's likely to mean a bit of a dollar bid and maybe yields uh, pushing back up again. Uh, conversely, on the other side, uh, if we get softer numbers, let's say, uh, you know, the headlines coming in around 1.1, 1.2%, a core 2% or, or less than that, um, then we're going to be thinking soft landing, inflation's coming back down, um, the Fed won't have to do much more um, in terms of that last rate hike. Um, so that's for the numbers. Now, what we've got today is a little bit of uh, a move in yields, and it's uh, pretty much across the board. Um, but if we look at uh, some of the prices, um, US 10s, we've broken down below the 2.7-ish area. You know, it's uh, some people looking at 2.6869, 2.71. I'm just calling it 4.7. Um, so that was an area that we found resistance on the way up. We found support. Now it's resistance again. Um, so now this is more and more obviously looking like a bit of a double top. Um, now, why is the reason why yields are coming down? Well, maybe because it's finished going up. Um, you know, there's been a pretty incessant move in yields as the, the market came around to the conclusion of the Fed staying higher for longer. Um could be seen as a little bit of a last hurrah since that uh, last FOMC meeting where we got this quite strong move. Um, in my opinion, we've just, we've priced it now. The market's priced it now. So there's there's nothing that, that really supports yields going higher um, in terms of the market repricing what it thinks its expectations are. So if you haven't got that bid, the only other way is down. Um, does that mean we're going all the way back down? Not necessarily, you know, the data is still very strong, but the fact that we've had that strong data um, and yields and in some aspects the dollar haven't responded as they, it was in this move, um, then we are finding ourselves a bit more balanced. So a bit like a lot of markets, a lot of pairs, we're in that sort of treading water stage, um, moving into that what next zone as well. Um, as mentioned, it's a, it's a story across the yield space. Uh, German tens, bunds, uh, finding a bit of a bid. Apparently, there was some big orders, or a big order went through this morning. Trips and buy stops. Um, so it's all it's all playing into this this generalised yield move that we're seeing. Um, now, maybe surprisingly, um, this yield move, particularly in the tens, isn't bringing as much dollar weakness as one might expect, euro dollar still struggling at this, uh, you know, 106, 10, 15, whatever you want to call it. We're still struggling around here. We can't make a de decisive break above this area and hold it. Um, dips this morning are fairly limited, though. Let's just bring it into a uh, short time frame. So, Yesterday, I mentioned that uh, this failure here would need to hold around 75.80. Yeah, well, we got to, what, 72s um, before bouncing. Then it made that new high. Then we've pulled back. So we're, we're trying to keep above this 106 area, but it's just not holding either. So it's, it's not very clean. We had a try this morning on those yield moves. It didn't last. Um, we did make a new high, so it keeps the momentum going. Um, and the pullback has, as I said, been pretty shallow, but we're just not making a decisive move. Um, on balance, just looking at this price action, one would think that maybe we are going to move higher, um, but it's, uh, it's a bit of a seesaw at the moment. Um, until we sort of see a proper hold up around 610, 615, um, it's still all in the balance. Um, same thing, dollar yen, although it's still a bit more... Uh, out on a limb, one should say. Um, the highs are getting a bit lower. 
um, but we're still finding decent bids. 148, 4050, once again showing up, uh, whereas it didn't in past times, so it's been a bit uh, on and off switch. So this is just starting to look like it might want to be moving a bit lower. Um, but again, that can all change. A really hot PPI data later, um, we might be back up through 149. Um, I'll be watching that closely because I think for now that uh, I still think for now that uh, rally sellers are going to have the upper hand in this one, at least in the uh, short term. Um, I'm still really got my buses parked 150, 147, um, but uh, I've not done anything so far this week. And I might be tempted if we get a decent uh, pop in dollar yen on hot PPI numbers just to uh, try a little short in that one. Um, similar story. It's, it's really is a similar story all over the place. It's it's a tough environment to trade right now. Well, for me, it is anyway. Um, I know plenty of you guys and girls will be scalping away and uh, good luck to you. Um, but for me, I'm, I don't like getting involved in this sort of mess. I don't like trading in a 20 pip range in euro dollar. I either want to see something significant happen or I'll just sit back and, and wait for my levels. Um, so that's uh, what I'm doing there. Um, Gavin, yeah, TTF and UK gas up 25% this week. Um, yeah, I looked at that uh, this morning. Um, a lot of people look at nat gas, obviously, um, in the US markets, and it's, it's pretty much a similar picture there. Um, in the others, uh, as you can see, we've had a bit of a takeoff um, on all this uh, gas headlines suddenly hitting the news. Um, as I said, typically we're coming into winter, so... Uh, you know, is that to factor in as well? But if there's going to be problems there, then we might be starting to see prices uh, going back up, which is obviously going to then bring the inflation picture adding to oil inflation pressures that uh, we've all seen of late. So, uh, yeah, just one uh, to keep an eye on, on that one. Um, Ali, he's jobbing away, uh, looking at dollar CAD. Long at uh, one thirty-five ninety-five. Let's have a look at old dollar CAD. Right, so this is one again. You know, I'm, I'm more bearish the pair, but at, uh, I'd like uh, better levels to sell it rather than try and sell it down here. Um, again, another one to look at for the PPI if we get a bit of a, a rocket up. 136.50, it uh, might bring me out, Michelle, a bit to try a bit of a short um, into that one. Um, but you're long up here. So, okay, uh, take profit 136.75. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, quite uh, 134. So you're giving yourself, uh, you're going quite wide on your uh, trades at the moment, Ali, you're looking for quite high profit target and uh, quite a low stop loss um, on that one. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that will keep it well within the range. Um, got a bit of a zone down here, so that's one area to look at. It didn't hold when we had uh, all that move at the end of September, that month in stuff. Um, but that might show up on a secondary move down here when, while we don't have that influence. But, uh, yeah, I hope you make your money, Ali. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm going to be on the other side if we see uh, a rally up in that one. Um so if you get up there, well, they'll probably be uh, adding to shorts and uh, then we can both make money. How about that? Um, yeah, Bran, this, this uh, Israel stuff is ticking over. I think our focus and just taking it from a trading perspective um, on this stuff is, is whether others are going to get dragged into it. You know, it's stretching now to Egypt, um, Russia and uh, Iran foreign ministers had a... a telephone call or conversation yesterday um everyone's watching from the sidelines um and it has raised the prospect of you know people stepping in you know we've had uh, the kremlin uh, out with some comments earlier saying that they're watching what's happening over there so really from a market perspective it's whether things spread a bit wider whether some of the uh outside actors, US, Russia, China, get more involved um, in what's going on. Only then will we start to see uh, the market sitting up and taking a bit more notice. Uh, so let's hope it doesn't go that way. Um, hey, Alex, 
Uh, morning to you, mate. Uh, yeah, let's have a, a quick look at oil. Um, doesn't seem like it wants to uh, get back to those highs, eh? Um, but again, a little bit of uh, what next here. I think uh, it's not going down anymore because of the, the potential uh, for the geopolitical risk in the region, um, although that's not uh, it's not a huge risk right now, but uh, perhaps the market's just a bit uh, cautious about it. Um, so we had the move up, got above uh, an area I was looking at, 93s, 94s, uh, poked its nose above, then came back down, then poked its nose below the lower levels, um, and now it's just uh, another one, treading water. Um Again, it's making it very difficult for, for a lot of traders, you know, sitting there. This is one of those times where think of it like uh, a bit of practice, a bit of training um, on patience. OK, if you're not got your levels anywhere near what the price action is doing, if you don't want to be trading in, you know, a buck, buck and a half range um, all day long, um, then this is when you need to practice your patience. You know, don't look to trace trades don't get yourself stuck in the middle of something silly just because you haven't traded as i say i've not traded a week so far uh, and right now i've no in inclination to do so um, and yes it does get frustrating um, because we're here to make money we're here to trade but I've, you've just got to resist the urge to trade for the sake of trading because that's when you lose money that's when you do something silly um, I'd rather do nothing, you know, go do some research, go and paint a wall or whatever you guys do at uh, home, go and walk the dog. Um, I know one of our traders has got a new dog. Um, hopefully that's not because he's bored trading, um, but uh, yeah, that'll keep him busy. Um, so yeah, you know, read up on things, you know, find out if you're not, if, if there's subjects in the market, you're not sure about go and read up on it. Do put your time to good use. Um, if you don't trade, you don't trade. Um, I'd rather not do it. Yeah, Brian. Trading for the sake of trading. It's not a good thing to do. Go for a walk. Um, right, just to look in, uh, have a brief look around some of the other pairs uh, and assets. Gold continues to tick up a little bit. Um, got a bit of that, interme again, the intermediate level around here, 1871. The bigger level for me is this 1885, um, which marked, uh, has been a bit of a, a range bottom um that's an area that i tried uh, buying longs and got taken to the cleaners on um so that need to see if we get up there that area in the broken fib is it going to hold up there as resistance again it might sit up for a bit of a range play between 1800 and 1885 1890 maybe call it 1900 um so if you've been long off the bottom here you're sailing pretty um you know bring your trailer stop up if you're running one you know edge it up take some profits off if you can um, i know that's easier for uh, those of us uh, not in the us to take partials um but you need to protect these moves you know if it doesn't get through 1870 what you're going to do um you know protect yourself get your stops in profit so if it does suddenly pull back at least you walk away with something uh, if you haven't been cutting um, just looking around some of the others as well, um, some of the crosses that uh, I know folks like to keep an eye on. Um, oh, where am I going that? I'll look at uh, EuroCAD. Um, again, a bit of a mixed picture. You know, we had a bit of a rally, we had a bit of a dip, and now it's sitting bang in the middle. Um, so, again, another one that's really undecided what to do. Um, again, you can, if you're looking at trading the CAD, this is one to look at. Um, if you want to take the dollar out the equation stay over the PPI report. Um, what you may find is a little bit of, of Passover. You know, if, if, if things are picking up in inflation in the US, um, we've already seen that same similar impact in Canada. So you might get a little bit of a spillover on a hot number here um, where, you know, if the US is getting it, Canada is going to get it. Um, so keep an eye on this one because you might see a bit of a gain for the CAD um, in some of these crosses if the, the US numbers are, are hot. Um, right, let's have a look. Any other uh, questions? Throw us up uh, other ones uh, if you want us to have a look at or want me to have a look at, seeing as I'm here on my lonesome. Um, it's a bit difficult, as I said, when all the pictures are looking 
precisely the same. Uh, and Ace wants to look at uh, a Kiwi, which we can certainly do if I remember where it is. There it is. Um, so this one's a bit uh, close, but no cigar. Um, I know someone in our room were looking to get short up into this area up here, 50s, 60s, and uh, came up short of getting uh, their positions filled on that. Um, but it's, it's again, one of these areas, you know, suddenly you hit a level that's a bit more significant. Um, you know, we had the level here around the, the 59, 60s, um, couldn't get through. Then we had the break, but then it washed out. So it's become a bit wishy-washy at the level. Uh, but in the last move, we've, we have, sort of held into that area 59 90 60 call it but we run into a bit of a longer term zone around uh 60 50 60 60 uh, and it's coming up short this is almost a bit like um euro dollar at the 106 even 15 area um you know as soon as you hit a decent traffic area the market says no nope, we're not getting through there um, you've had your fun buying it up here. Now the sellers are coming back in and saying, not so fast, you're not taking us into this area here. Um, so you've got, again, it's a matter of context. You know, look at your trends within trends within trends. You know, we've had a big uptrend. Now we're in a downtrend. Um, in the midst of that, we've got a short-term uptrend. Now the short-term uptrend is, is holding. Um, we've broken the 50 fib already, so it suggests that, uh, you know, we're coming back into things. Uh, but then you look at this trend, what's it going to do to break this this shallow move down lower uh, that we've had all year? Well, it's got to get, uh, you know, right back up, back above the old 38.2 here, 61, 45 and a half. Um, so depends what you're doing, uh, Anise. Um, are you long? Are you short? Are you trading long term? Short term, um, you know, let us know and uh, I can look at it uh, in a bit deeper for you. But uh, yeah, got to moving average action gain on here, the 100 DMA sitting right on that 60 line as well. Um, so again, a reason why the price has perhaps pulled up, at least on the technical side of things. Um, another one, I'm um, again, bloody ping pong markets, I tell you. Um, Dollar China still glued um had the move yesterday through 728 down to 727 today hello 728 again um now we get another bounce into 30s so i i the more i look at this the more i think that maybe the officials are playing both sides of this uh maybe unofficially if you like um we know they've been stepping in selling dollars um in strong moves higher um maybe they're just giving their banks the rope to uh, get those back if we get dips under 728 or 2728. Um, so it may be, as I say, they're playing both sides of the coin on this one just to keep things stable, which is their main rhetoric. You know, they always say the PBOC, um, they want uh, the one to move in a stable manner. Well, it doesn't get much more stable than this. Um, what I might do now is be a bit more confident jobbing it between 728s and 732s at least from the short side so adding a bit more 732s 33s offloading down into uh 29s 28s uh if not better um and just chipping away plan doing a bit of jobbing in between there while keeping a core position on board um your long kiwi anise uh 5974 okay that's good let's have a look at that in a bit more detail then So you got uh, you have got some a bit of margin in the trade. You're well on side, so you're in from down around here. So uh, yeah, very nice. Um, the trend is your friend, as we said. So it keeps going. If you get a hold back below sixty, that's when you've got to be worried. Um, so you might expect that uh, dips to come down to this fifty nine ninety sixty level because um, it's a bit of an on off support and resistance point. So as long as that holds, you're right. Um, but you need this higher level to break. 
So you've you know you've got a uh, good uh, 70, 80 pips out of it so far. Um, I hope you're taking profit or have taken some profit um, and locked in your stops behind um, because you don't want to be 60, 70 pips on side, not taking anything, and then something happens and you get stopped out. Um, so in these slow markets, just take some money when it's available. Um, Ali, uh, on a daily basis with this, and yields are going there, carry trade, bonds are going lows. We, we know yields will go higher, dollar will go higher, bonds will go lower. Uh, I want to know complete knowledge. Uh, okay, you want to go deep in the knowledge. Okay, so you know that um, if yields are going up, it means bonds are being sold. Okay, so the price is going down. So, they, so people are selling, the balance is with the sellers. That's what's causing yields to go higher. Um, you know, you don't buy yields up. Okay. So it's market selling bonds. Okay. And what that means is it, it, it depends on the context. You know, it can mean different things at different times. Yields going higher can often mean, um, as Kashkari said, that investors feel confident in the economy of whatever economy is let's you do it with the us is, is the easy example so us yields going higher if it's because investors think the economy is doing well then they get out of safer assets like treasuries and they put their money into risk which is why you see yields going up and stocks going up that's a, a, a typical play you see you come people are getting out of bonds because that's a safer play and getting into higher risk things like stocks so that's the usual uh, or one aspect one context that you can use for that but another context can come if investors feel that there are issues going on now we know the us is increasing its debt by a big chunk it's issuing more debt issuing more bonds and so investors might be thinking well you know you're putting yourself in a bit of position guys um you're looking for raising higher debt amid higher rates, it's going to be a pressure on you to repay that debt. Therefore, we're going to demand um, a higher interest rate from you to buy your debt. Um, so that pushes the price of yields up as well. And that's more of a negative because then it's seen as a potential financial worry. OK, the US is increasing its debt. How is it going to pay its debt with all high interest rates? Right, we want a premium to lend you money, Mr. Bidden. Um, so that's the, that's the other side of the coin regarding uh, yields. Now, what happens with the dollar? Again, it can go up or it can go down depending on um, demand. So if investors are happy, if foreign investors are happy to uh, buy US debt, they obviously need to buy dollars to lend to the US. So there comes your dollar demand uh, for things like that. But in this case, as we saw with that auction um, last night, demand wasn't as much as it was before therefore there's less dollars needed to be bought to buy those bonds uh, you know you can look at it in that instance therefore the market's saying well no one wants to buy us bonds well that's where the dollar gets sold so it, it, it's all a, it's all a level of context i think right now we there's a bit of a mix going on there's a mix going on because the economy in the us is doing okay but the US is also increasing its debt load. So there's there's a balance in, in one side, you've got the, the positive economy, and the other side, you've got the higher debt. So what we're seeing, I think, with yields right now is that pull and push between the two. You know, sometimes yields are going to go up because the market's, uh, you know, seeing the higher for longer message. So it's seeing a better economy. It's getting out of bonds and going into stocks. Um, but on other times, we're seeing the, well, we're worried about the, the level of debt uh, and the level of cost to the US. So, you know, we're not uh, we're not going to give you our money. Um, yeah, that, that link's uh, probably a good one there, Gavin. Uh, have a read of that. Um, uh, what does this high yield mean? People deposit and get more interest. Um, yeah, again, that's another aspect. You, you've got investors who are maybe thinking, right, well, if this is the top for interest rates and interest rates are going to go down from this point, then I'm going to buy bonds. I'm going to put my money into bonds, four and a half, five percent, whatever, because I'm happy to sit on that. I wasn't getting that in a savings account for the last 15 years. 
now I can put it in relatively, should be relatively safe asset like government bonds and I can earn interest there rather than sticking it, leaving it in my bank account. So there's all different types of investors. You've got investors who like risk, you've got investors who like yield, you've got investors who, who like switching from one to another, playing one yield off against another. You know, like the carry trade, borrow cheaply to park your money in some way you're going to earn something. There's never one force at play. The only time there's one force at play is when you get big moves um, like this. So you can pretty much say that this move in yields, if we just look at US 10s, um, was, was a flow of money, okay? It was a flow of money that moved these yields. Now that flow of money stopped. And so if that flow isn't there anymore, then the market's going to drop or yields are going to drop. Um, it's the same in everything, supply and demand in, in its simplicity. Um, you know, that's why prices move. That's why euro dollar goes up. Forget technical levels, forget everything. Forget moving averages, fibs, trend lines, whatever. If there's more buyers and sellers, it's going to go up. And if there's a reason why the buyers think they're on the right side, then they buy strongly and the sellers go, well, we're not, we can't fight that. And so the price moves up. It's, you know, supply and demand is the, the basis of everything to do with trading. Um, but anyway, that's, a, that's uh, hopefully a, a brief insight into uh, what happens in bonds and yields and flows and investors and whatever. But uh, yeah, while it's quiet, as I said, you know, get into uh, some research. Uh, Investopedia is a good place to start. Um, do some reading up, see how markets move. Um, but again, don't get too tied up in uh, the correlations. You have to know what's moving something any one time. Don't just think yields down means dollar down. Um, it doesn't always happen like that. You just take your cues from what the price does, not what you think it does. does. Um, yeah, that's a good book as well. That's more for trading. Um, attacking currency trends from my old mate, Greg Michalowski, uh, very good teacher uh, on that. Um, yeah, Ali, your point, investors division of money goes from here to there. That's, that's what trading is. That's, that's what's happening each and every second you see prices move and assets move. Um, it's people just moving money from one place to another. They think today, right, the economy is doing well. I'm going to buy stocks. They see two bits of bad data. They think, oh, no, that's not going to happen. I'm going to move out of stocks and I'm going to move it back into bonds. Every day, all, you, all it is is flows, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And when those flows are strong in one direction, that's when you get a trend. Um, that's the way you've got to look at it. Um, right. So come on, guys and girls. Anything else you want me uh, to look at? Let's get some uh, comments up. Uh, you know, how are you finding these markets? Are you making money? Are you finding good opportunities or are you finding it a bit slow uh, and a bit tough and uh, you're getting that itch to go chasing uh, trades and stuff? Brian, let's look at cable. I mean, uh, you get this enough in the chat room. So uh, I don't know what more you want me to add to that. But um, a similar situation uh, here, you know, hitting some of the uh, stronger levels on the way up and uh, finding a bit of a brick wall. Um, you know, this uh, 122.80 level, you know, it goes back in time. So you can see when we start to hit these bigger levels that the price is not so fast. Um, so that's why I've got that level there. Um, but it's all these dollar pairs, Aussie, Kiwi, euro is all looking the same you know we've had a trend down now we've found a bit of a bottom now we're going out the other way but we're not out the woods yet you know this trend here we don't hit the 38.2 fib until the magic one uh 24 and a half 60 area you know that big old zone up there so this trend isn't train isn't changing in my opinion just yet at the moment this is maybe just a dead cat bounce if we start breaking these levels, breaking that fib, well, then I'll start to believe. Um, but, you know, you want to trade it. So if you want to trade it, then maybe look to buy a break up here, 123, 122.80, 123. And if you get above there and hold it, if you haven't got any position in this one, if you didn't get long in this and missed it, 
well, fine. You can take your cues maybe off two areas, one 2260s. You know, you have a little tight long off of there, tight stop in case it doesn't hold because it's only a real short-term level. Uh, maybe you get the springboard, but you, you've only got, you know, 30 pips to play with by the time you factored in spreads. Um, so if you get 10, 15, 20 pips in the green, you need to be taking some off and protecting the rest. Or you wait, break 123s, wait for a retest, try that, and then maybe you get the springboard. Um, so you can trade these slow markets, but you've got to have patience and you've got to pick your levels. Because um, there's no point jumping in here at 122, 70s, 80s and thinking, right, I'm going to buy it because you're messing around in a real tight zone. So have patience or wait for a, a bigger dip. Uh, but then maybe you get scared if you get a bigger dip because you think, OK, what's happened here? We've, we've come all the way back down to 122s, 121 and a half. What's, what's gone wrong? And now all of a sudden, while it's at 123, you want to buy a dip when it's down here. You think, well, do I want to buy that dip now? So this is where the psychology of trading comes into play because you can have your mind changed uh, in an instant. That's why you trust your levels. If you've been waiting for a dip, well, you get a dip, move to 121.50, there's your dip. You know, how you trade that is down to you. Do you try a tight long um, or do you think, no, nope, I'm going to buy it from there all the way down to the lows and then hope for a bigger move up, a, a secondary hole, a double bottom to form and then a secondary move up that might kick us up there. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, just uh, just go with the flow. Go with the price action and uh, see what happens. Um, Horatio, what do I think of Aussie dollar long on a weaker CPI? Uh, are we par past China pessimism? I'm going to assume that's, are we past China pessimism? Uh, yes, I think we are past China pessimism. I think we've been past it for a couple of weeks now. Um, you know, we were, we were monitoring China when they were easing and uh, looking at rate cuts and the market was reacting in the natural way that uh, it does when a country or economy is easing. Uh, you know, it was uh, seeing the currency weaken. But then we got the flip and the flip was when the market suddenly thought, well, hang on, this easing is actually designed to fix the issues in China Um now it seems more positive that they're doing something about it. Um, so now when we see further easing news, like the fiscal stuff we had uh, earlier this week, um, the one got bought because it was the market saying, yes, we're going to, we're seeing that they're actually going to try and fix this thing. And the data is starting to show in a, in a tepid format that uh, it's responding. We've seen better PMIs over there in China. So yeah, so it's, Aussie dollar, it's going to be a bit of a, a risk play um, in terms of PPI. It's, again, it's the same as all the other pairs. You know, these moves, if I took out what asset this was, it could be cable, it could be euro dollar, it could be kiwi. You know, it's all going to move the same way. Um, but it's going to be a question of speed. You know, again, we're in a bit of a shallower downtrend. You know, we found a bottom. It's looking at... It, this one looks slightly different to uh, some of the other pairs because we had a sharp move down and then it's been grinding lower since. So although we've got a bit of a short-term bottoming pain, a pretty decent bounce, we're not breaking out of that trend just yet. So we need to get above this area will be, will be my pick 65, 20s, 40s, get back above that. Then you, then I'll be ready to confirm that this is a, a bottom in play. But until then, I, I'm not sure it is. It might be, but I'm not sure. I don't have conviction that it is. Um, but if we get a break above there, then I'll have great conviction that we're turning around uh, at least this part of the trend, um, which if we go a bit wider, is part of a bigger move down, which has been a bit messy. Um, but again, you know, this is you can look at this similar price action here as we're getting here. OK, where it's just not doing anything, but it's just edging down and then we get a bit of a bounce and then the, the trend resumes. Um, so this one, yeah, definitely not looking like we're breaking the trend quite yet. But there's plenty of pips to be made trading these moves anyway. Um, so on the on the PPI numbers, again, strong numbers. You're going to see a dip in this. Um, if you don't believe that that dip's going to last, well, then pick where you want to buy it. 
if you get a dip, you know, 63 and a half, probably a bit of a push for that number, but dip down there, that's going to look uh, very enticing for buyers. Um, so if you're not in a trade already and want to be long, that's where you want to get in. If you want to get in short, then you perhaps want a week's number. Maybe we're going to move up to 65. I, I expect we get a bit of traffic um, before we get to 65. So 64, 80s, 90s. Um, so if you want to get on the short side, that's your technical area to look at. Above 65, 40, something's probably changed. Um, and then maybe you get a bit of range play going on. Um, but again, let us know what you're doing. I'm taking Horatio that you're thinking uh, about an Aussie long. Um, so you know, let us know what levels you're looking at. Um, where are you looking to uh, get in if uh, you're not long and wanting to pick a trade? Um, Ali, I'm not going to talk about uh, tomorrow's UK data or I have nothing to talk about tomorrow. So we'll say that one uh, for tomorrow. Um, right. Nothing much else uh, I can talk about. It's really... Uh, it's a bit disheartening because obviously we want to give you some good ideas and, uh, you know, talk about markets moving and what's next and where we're going. But, you know, there are times when you just have to sit back and put your feet up and, uh, you know, think about what you need to do next. You know, pick your levels, know where you want to trade and just sit back and wait for it. Um, don't go rushing in to something stupid. Anyway, we shall call that uh, a day. Oh, Horatio, you wait. I was waiting for a break above 64 yeah, so it's, again, it's not looking all that decisive, is it? You know, again, it's this is, again, a bit similar to, to the 106, 10, 15. You're getting the moves above 64, but then it fails. Um, but it's looking a bit more supported now. So, you know, that's uh, 64 is your, your level. Um, you're getting a bit of, bit of a step up, 64, 10, but you've got to take out these highs. If you can't take out these highs, if you get them another move up here and it falls short, you know, 64.30s, then you've got to think maybe you've got a bit of a top in play and maybe it comes back. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody. Um, get those questions ready for tomorrow. Um, Sab, I'll look at uh, Pound Swiss tomorrow, seeing as uh, Alice highlighted, we've got some data out. Um, let's have a look what data is. GDP numbers, uh, monthly GDP numbers, and we've got industrial production. Okay, so we'll look at that uh, tomorrow for you guys and girls have a great day stay safe over that ppi number um hopefully you got uh, yourself set up and ready to know what to do with it have a great day we shall see you all tomorrow hey traders this is blake morrow with forex analytics thanks for stopping by our youtube channel don't forget to like these videos share them and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free thanks for stopping by i'll see you in the next video Thank <laughs> you.